Paraphrasing the eternal words of Raven Darkholm, Shipper and Proud. Hi everyone, Carla here. So before going into today's topic, I just wanted to let you know that I did record that video I mentioned last time where I ranked the psychopath characters by tiers. It was fun! We had ourselves a little YouTube live powwow type thing, although, you know, there weren't that many people there because it was Super Bowl time, so yeah, whatever, maybe next time, but it's recorded up there and you know, now that it's done, the recording lives in my Patreon, so if you want to see it, you have to go there and subscribe, or if, if subscriptions are not your thing, you can always buy me a coffee on Ko-fi and leave me a note telling me which video, which extra video you want to see, and I'll be sure to get back to you with the access, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, with that out of the way, let's move on straight away onto today's topic, which is shipping. I know, I know, I'm delving into dark waters here. <laughs> dark waters. But, you know, I regret nothing. I'm a shipper, guys. It's who I am and that is never going to change. I have at least one ship in pretty much every fandom that I'm in. And shipping is such a quintessential part of my fandom experience, of my writing experience at that, that any discussion about shipping is just immediately personal to me. And there is one very specific take on shipping that just immediately inspires thoughts in me. It's not the first time I've seen this take, but I came across a version of it on YouTube recently and thus... I think some clarifications need to be made. So about a month ago, YouTube channel The Take posted a video essay titled Why We Ship Characters from X-Files to Rayla. You can find the link to it in the description below. And before I say anything else, I, I just want to make clear that this is not a slam against The Take. I actually quite enjoy their videos. And they do make a great point about how social media has given fans unprecedented access to creators, and thus making that sense of entitlement, when, when there is one, worse than it would normally be. Look, I'm old, and I remember what life was like before social media. Hell, I remember what life was like before the internet was widely available. This is one of my biggest gripes. Not just in terms of geek culture, but just fandom in general. Because the casualness of it all is just unfathomable to me. Writers and directors and musicians and creators in general are not your friends. Social media might make it seem like you know them really well, but you don't. Stop being all casual with them. It just, it drives me nuts. The kind of embarrassing stuff people just up and tweet at celebrities, and it is definitely not okay to harass them, insult them, or otherwise harm them online just because they did something you didn't want them to do. Know your fucking place, people. That's all. That's all there is to it. But when it comes to this video of the takes in particular, I have quite a few points that I, as a shipper, disagree with. Starting with the fact that, yes, it's fair to say that Mulder and Scully were the first internet era big ship and to analyze the effect that this ship had on internet shipping in general. But did you really need to focus on them for six whole minutes? Like your video's not that long. <laughs> six whole minutes of the entire life story of Mulder and Scully? I mean, dang. I shipped them too. I was one of those fans hanging on to every little moment. But six whole minutes? makes the video a little uneven, <laughs> to say the least. Now, I could expand here on Harry and Hermione and why I think the take just put way too much weight on authorial intent, and don't even get me started on this 
idea that Logan and Veronica from Veronica Mars lost steam simply because they got together and not because of, let's say, terrible writing in season 3. But the main issue I have with this video, and it's one I have not just with this video, but with many other takes on shipping, even at the academic level, because a lot of the takes and others' background on this comes from research done by experts in the field of psychology and sociology that a lot of the time gets quoted in these videos. But my, my main gripe is that from the get-go, they all seem to be conforming to a very reductive definition of what shipping is. The takes video in particular seem to be focusing very specifically on the negative side of shipping. They even call it controversial at one point, while treating it like that is the whole of shipping culture. And it's just not. So let me start this essay slash rant by saying something I didn't think needed to be said in this the year of our lord 2021, but I guess I thought wrong. Liking things is not bad. Having a preference on movies, music, books, TV shows, it's not bad. Having a favorite character is not bad. And similarly, having a favorite pairing is not bad. It's normal. It's human. And it's a good thing if it makes you happy. It's okay to get attached to something you like. It's okay to get super intense and enthusiastic about something you like. So if it's okay for me to be really into Marvel movies or young adult books or Baby Yoda or whatever, why is it controversial for me to be really into a fictional pairing? Small aside, I could note here that there's probably a misogynist component to this, where any activity mostly enjoyed by women and girls is seen as inherently less worthy of respect than other more masculine pursuits, particularly within geek culture. I will leave that for another day though, because I definitely don't think that's what the take intended with their video essay. They're a channel created by and powered by women, and they're generally very good at analyzing media through the lens of feminism. But this framing is an issue of society in general and geek culture in particular, that unfortunately bleeds down and is internalized by even the most feminist of takes. So I think it's worth to point it out. A side over. Going back to my initial point, shipping, not bad. Totally normal. And to be clear, certainly the takes video doesn't argue that shipping is bad. But the framing of it and the focus of it on the negative side of shipping might leave you with that impression. And it's entirely because of how they define shipping. In their own words, and also quoting a psychologist who has studied fandom phenomena, they tell us that shipping is about exploring your own identity and looking for the fictions of our own romantic, sexual, and emotional fantasies. Now, it's not the first time I've come across this idea that people ship specific pairings because they see themselves in the characters or because the relationship in itself is something they have or wish to have in their real lives. If you've followed me for a while and have watched my Joe and Lori essay, you have heard me rail against this idea that shipping is nothing but some kind of wish fulfillment endeavor. Because everything in me Everything in my fandom experience just viscerally rebels against that idea. And to be fair, I I'm not saying that doesn't happen. Yes, some people ship specific ships because they see themselves in the characters or they see their own real-life relationship in that fictional relationship. Or they just want to have a relationship like that in real life. It does happen, and yes, in that case, shipping is a reflection of their identity. I'm just saying. That is not the only reason people ship things, and it's unfortunate that these hot takes and academic studies seem to focus only on that. Ah, identity. It's quite the buzzword these days, and if you've been on the internet or watched the news for the last uh, five years or so, I'm sure you've heard it. Probably in a pejorative manner. Identity politics and all that. 
Being conscious of your own identity and what defines it is not a bad thing either, but it can get you in trouble when you start to distance yourself or even hate people whose identity conflicts with yours. And this is why the idea that shipping is only rooted in your identity can imply an emphasis on the negative side of it because it means that your taste in pairings becomes personal. And because it's personal, you become extremely defensive over it, which leads to devastating ship wars and terrible online behavior with respect to creators and fellow fans and just overall unhappiness in a community that otherwise should have been celebratory of our shared interests rather than awful and frustrating. And that does happen. I've been part of more fandoms than I can count on hands and feet. And I have walked away from fandoms I otherwise loved because the ship wars got so bad that it just it made the entire fandom a toxic environment that was difficult to even exist in. So, Trust me, I know it's a thing, I'm not saying that it's not. But it's not fair to define all shipping as ship wars. That's not all there is to shipping. And identity is not the only reason why people ship. How do I know this? Well, a few reasons. First, hostility to the fans or the powers that be is not the only measure of how invested I am in a parent. I can be just as invested in a ship without those negative expressions. I express that investment by writing fanfiction or making edits or in fan videos, creating crafts and merch, writing essays, or even just talking to my fellow shippers about our favorite aspects of the pairing or what we want to see happen in the future. Just because I'm not attacking people who ship differently doesn't mean that I don't actually love that ship. In fact, I would say that the in-group out-group tendencies, when they happen, are less a reflection of shipping specifically than they are just a representation of the tribalism that has been growing in society for decades. Of course fandoms will split into different in-groups, because that is what any kind of identity does these days. Which movies you like, which music you like, your socioeconomic class, race, religion, political party, but that attitude trickles down from the general to the specific, not vice versa. If we split ourselves into us and them, it's because that's what society does these days, not because it's some inherent flaw of shipping itself. Second, this idea of some pervasive fan entitlement where anything that is not working up toward the ship being canon is a waste of time. That may be true for some fans, but it's not an absolute, and anecdotally, I doubt that it's even a majority of the fans who feel that way. What about people who knowingly ship non-canon pairings? Crack pairings? Sometimes the shipping and the community you find within it is the point, rather than just winning. If you look at my list of ships, and yes, I, I do have a list of my ships that I keep methodically updated, link in the description, you will see that there are plenty of ships I love that didn't happen in canon. Side note, I actually tried to do the math like 10 years ago and it came out to about 50% of my ships that are non-canon. I don't know if it's still that way. I feel like I've been shipping canon more often recently for some reason. It also depends a lot of the length on the length of the like <laughs> fandom. I guess of, of the medium, like if it's an anime and it's really really freaking long, I tend to like cling onto one ship that I liked from the beginning and then go with it even if things change later on. But nowadays TV shows and, and stuff are, are getting shorter and shorter and shorter, so it's easier for me to kind of like see the trajectory of where canon is going and jumping onto that, usually if it's well done. So I, I guess it really depends. It might have changed a little in more recent years. But when I tried doing the math like a decade ago, it turned out to be 50% canon, 50% non-canon. So kind of balances out too. Anyway, side note over. I even have ships that I am well aware would never work in canon. And I just enjoy them in fanfiction in alternate universe settings. There is 
zero. There is zero inherent entitlement there. Zero. But that doesn't mean I don't ship them. That's shipping too. And last, if you're telling me that people ship exclusively because they identify with the ship, I'm going to assume that you're talking about OTP shipping. That is, when you ship one pairing as your main. This is very common in fandoms where there is one main alpha ship. Think the X-Files where the issue was less which pairing you shipped and more whether you ship Mulder and Scully or not. <laughs> but not every fandom is like that, especially nowadays with when shows and movies with big sprawling ensemble casts are dominating the screen. There are people who ship many ships in one fandom, and there are even people who ship one character with multiple other characters, either all at once in a polyamorous way or individually paired. It is what it is. You ship some more and you ship some less, but each one of those is a ship. And if you like them, then you're shipping them. That is a kind of shipping. It exists and it cannot be based exclusively on identity. Like, for example, in my ships lists, you'll see that I can ship many, many pairings in a specific fandom, up to five or six in some. And while I'm sure that I can find something in each of them that I can also recognize in myself if I think hard enough, that doesn't mean that I identify with them. They're not a part of my identity, I just like them. I like them a lot and I would wax poetic about them for hours and write essays explaining why they work and think of them every time a specific song comes up on Spotify and be just as intense about them as I am for my single OTP in some other fandom. And it's got nothing to do with my identity. I just saw something in them, in their dynamic, that drew me to them. And that's the thing, isn't it? All these YouTube takes and academic studies are so busy trying to demonstrate what shipping says about us as individuals that they forget that sometimes people just like things because they find them entertaining, because they find them interesting. Because, see, liking a ship is much like liking characters. You might prefer a character over the rest because they're the most like you or have been through experiences similar to yours. But you also might prefer a character over the rest because they make you laugh or because they make you smile or because they make you think or because they make you cry or because they make you scared. And it says nothing about you. You can even like characters you know are terrible because they're terrible. And that doesn't necessarily say anything about you. In fact, Princess Weeks touched upon this in one of her recent video essays about redemption arcs. The link is also in the description and definitely go watch it because it's an awesome take. Anyway, in her video the general gist of it was that amoral characters should be allowed to exist without their amoral choices and our enjoyment of them being seen as a reflection of the audience. And can I just say, yes, exactly this. Look. If you've been following me long enough, you will have heard me say that I really like my villains evil and that I hate when they're giving sub stories to humanize them. You know, not that I don't enjoy a good redemption arc every once in a while, but it needs to be done extremely well for me to like it and very few of them are done well. Explaining but not excusing and atoning, not just repenting. For every Zuko or Logan from Veronica Mars, you have a Darth Vader in Return of the Jedi and yes, I am saying what you think I'm saying, turning Vader back to the light side right before his death was unnecessary and I will die on this hill if I have to. There's a reason Return of the Jedi is my least favorite of the original trilogy. As far as I'm concerned, Vader is one of the greatest villains of all time and anything that happened in those last few, oh, what, five or so minutes of his life is, let's just say it's optional for me. But anyway, the point is that I love me an evil, unredeemable, utterly inhumane, selfish, dastardly villain that is evil just because that's the way he or she is. And that's totally fine. 
me liking them and enjoying their scenes and their plot and their dialogue does not mean that I'm evil. I'm an adult and I understand the difference between reality and fiction. By liking this character, I'm not saying that I am like them in real life, that I want to be like them in real life, or that I would endorse any real life person doing or saying in real life the things that this villain does or says in fiction. I just find them interesting. I'm drawn to the idea of understanding what makes them tick. In the same way that people can't stop looking at a train wreck or are fascinated by the lights of serial killers and cult leaders. And that's okay. It's normal. It doesn't say anything about me as a person. Because it's not even a pattern in and of itself. I also like good, nice, decent characters that don't have one ounce of evil in their souls. Human beings can like many different things and we don't necessarily have to have a specific reason. I could write you an essay on why I love character X and it might be a completely different set of reasons as to why I love character Y from this other show or book. I just like them because at some point in my acquaintance of them, they grabbed my attention and refused to let go until they were fully burrowed inside my heart. And that's okay. I can like things simply because I like them. I don't have to have a reason. I don't owe anyone a justification. And my liking them doesn't say anything about me other than I have a varied taste. And it's the exact same thing with ships. I will shout from the hills that I don't like enemies to lovers relationships. Again, because it requires the enemy in question being redeemed and that is rarely done well, but if you browse through my list of ships, I'm sure you'll find many, many of them. I don't like relationships where the bullied falls in love with their bully. I think these kinds of relationships too easily tend to excuse and romanticize the toxic behavior, and that is very dangerous in real life. But still, if you browse through my list of ships, you'll be able to find at least one like that. I will tell you over and over that my preference is friends to lovers relationships because it seems more realistic and more stable and quite honestly it's the kind of relationship that I would love to have in real life. But if you browse through my list of ships, you will find a whole bunch of love for side relationships regardless of how silly and antiquated and unrealistic I think the concept itself is. You might think that makes me a hypocrite. But it just means that I enjoyed the chemistry of a certain pairing and it won me over despite my preconceived notions about their circumstances. And maybe they got to me first. Maybe I just thought they were the most interesting. Maybe they're the ones that taught me the most. For whatever reason. And there isn't just one. This particular pairing touched my heart in a way that other couples in similar circumstances just didn't. And why does that happen? Because shipping, much like liking a character or liking a genre or liking a hobby, is not a logical enterprise, but an emotional one. Human beings aren't robots following an algorithm. There doesn't need to be a pattern to it. You can like many different things for many different reasons. And that is ostensibly where this concept of shipping from identity comes from. The idea that something might draw a more emotional response from you because you see yourself in it. But that's not the only reason and honestly, I think it's kind of a lazy argument. Identity might explain why there are ship wars, but it doesn't explain why there is shipping. Those are two different things and frankly I find it a bit offensive as a proud fangirl and shipper to see that they're conflated so often. Yes, identity is very likely a big factor in shipping and it can lead to conflict within the fandom just as much as it can lead to conflict in everything else, politics, religion, culture, etc. But I think the problem with these hot takes and academic research on shipping is that they're getting the causality backwards. I don't love these pairings because they're a part of me. They become a part of me 
because I love them. And maybe it would be worth it to start looking at all the good that comes from shipping for once, rather than always focusing on the bad. You know, the part where we might not all like the same things, but we exercise tolerance and learn to respect other people's opinions instead of tearing them down to make ourselves feel superior. The part where we can celebrate together the fandoms we love, regardless of which aspects of them we love. The part where it's okay for people to like what they like, as long as it's not hurting anyone. Because the world needs more joy these days. So yeah, that's about everything I had to say for the moment regarding this topic. What do you think? Are you a shipper? Do you think shipping is a good, fun thing in general? Or have ship wars jaded you? <laughs> do you get as annoyed as I do when you hear people equating ship wars and fan entitlement and bad online behavior with shipping in general? Let me know in a comment. In the meantime, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm always happy to see people liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. It really does help me a lot bump up my reach with the YouTube algorithm. You can find me on social media on Twitter and Instagram at girlsareweird with underscores between the words and on Tumblr at girlsareweird with hyphens between the words. You can find a Facebook page for this vlog at facebook.com slash freaking narnia and as usual remember to visit my main website at freaking narnia.com slash vlog that's v-l-o-g all my videos are there in case you missed and something and want to catch up. It's all up there. Also, remember that I have a Redbubble store where I make art based on my favorite quotes from my favorite fandoms. And then you can use that art to print on all kinds of merchandise such as t-shirts, coffee cups, computer covers, and more. So be sure to stop by and maybe purchase something if you're in the mood. It really does help me a lot. If you'd rather have these video episodes in podcast form on the same day they go up on YouTube, then you want to go to my Patreon and subscribe, link in the description. There are different tiers and one of them also gives you access to a series of extra videos that won't be released on YouTube, like the Psychopath character tier ranking I mentioned at the beginning of this episode. Alternatively, if the subscription model isn't your thing, you can buy me a coffee on my brand new Kofi page. Just leave me a note on your donation telling me which extra video you want to watch and I'll get you access as soon as possible. And that's it for me today. Don't forget the golden rule of ship and let ship. And I'll see you next time with another video from all the way in freaking Narnia. Bye! The eternal words of Raven Darkhorn that I that just immediately inspired inspires thoughts that just immediately inspire the casualness of it all is just unfamily. Having a favorite. You can find me on social media. <laughs>